Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is Francesco here. I am very lucky to be joined by Sarah Nietzsche uh, and she is uh, a well-known tech YouTuber. She runs uh, the Creative Life podcast uh, and also uh, has over half a million subscribers um, and she does regular reviews about uh, tech and uh, software as well. So uh, we, I, I think I first came across yourself, as I said, a couple of years ago um but i found out recently you're a, you're a notion lover uh, like myself oh, yes. so <laughs> that's really good to hear and um maybe uh, for those who don't know you you could fill in any of the gaps that i may have missed there. definitely yeah so hey guys what's up it's an honor to be here i am like all of us i feel like kind of a dork right so whether it's you know software like notion or the new iphones or ipads or uh in the past few years i did a huge move for the second time in my life from Mac to PC. And that was really fun because, you know, I felt like I was discovering a whole new world. Um, so really my YouTube channel just in, it just shows my own journeys with tech. So I don't cover everything, not every single piece of tech, but I'm kind of selfish in that whatever interests me, I'm like, yes, let's make four videos about camera this week. And then let's make a ton of videos about Notion the next. And then let's make a ton of videos about the iPhone. So I keep myself entertained. You got to keep things fun, right? Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I definitely keep myself entertained with too many apps. Um, so yeah. You stay it. really busy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you learn because, I mean, all these apps are so unique on their own. So, I, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a learning curve with all of them. How long does it take you to like get into, like we were just talking about Rome. Have you sat down and dug into that yet? Uh, I know it probably surface level, but yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's mad how many new ones are coming out every single day. Uh, yeah. Keep, keeps me busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For oh, sure. yeah. Um, and you, you were mentioned before as well that you do, you, you first explored Asana with your team and then mm -hmm. you went over to Notion. So maybe you can take us through like the journey with apps Oh, definitely. Because uh, creativity, I think, is a very messy process. It got to a point where I did everything via email, iMessage, everything was just everywhere. So the world was basically saying, hey, if you want to grow, if you want to expand, if you want to like be an adult, you know, you got to you got to get things organized. So that's I started asking around and Asana was kind of just the first natural step. And it, it basically became a tool for my team. But then, so when I say my team, I basically mean uh, my management. So two people there. And then anybody who I have help with filming or editing, I still do like 60% of my editing on YouTube just because I'm a control freak. And at the end of the day, that is my thing is editing. And I love it. But again, if you want to grow, okay, you have to expand your team. And so I, I started with Asana because that just seemed like what everyone was using. Hmm. And like I said, every, like other people were using it, but I wasn't. And so when you're kind of like at the core of why people are using a tool and you're not actively using it, hmm. it, it was just bad. I would basically go in at the beginning of the month put everything in and then I would never update it. I would never actively be a part of it. And so that's why it's so interesting when Notion came around because it's something that, again, I've told you this before, it's like fun. Like, oh my gosh, a productivity tool, that's fun. And it got me to go in it actively every single day, a couple of times a day, I'm updating it, I'm tweaking it. And I think something clicked with me with the table layout that it just seems like forever changing. I'm not scared to go in. I've never liked the Kanban board view. And, you know, of course you can view information and in, in different things. But if I recall correctly, I feel like Asana, you had to choose the view that you wanted and you had to stay there. Like it didn't, I think they changed it recently where you can view the same information in different views now, mm. like in Notion. Yeah. But before it was like you had to pick a view. And then if you wanted to do another view, it wasn't like the same information. And yeah. am I saying that correct? What was Yeah, you're, felt you're like right. It was yeah. Different. yeah. Yeah, it's it was uh Trello's been uh fixed a lot, but it's yeah, yeah. these sort of applications that they, they they stay the same. They've recently sort of bubbling up and changing. But. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so it just made more sense to me mm. that 
okay, let's start with a table and let's then view that information in different mm-hmm. views if I want. So if I want a Kanban board for a, uh, you know, for a specific purpose, I'll just add that view or, you know, I can customize the view and calendar, but I'm not actually changing the information. These different spaces aren't, um, it just, I guess I'm not explaining it well, but it just made more sense in my brain and going about going back to the fun thing. I think a lot of people and I feel like a lot of this conversation is going to sound like this is an ad for Notion. Um, they've sponsored mm-hmm. one video, but it, it's <laughs> truly like, you know, I didn't get paid to start Notion or, or you know, begin mm-hmm. the journey, but I just got addicted. And a lot of people say, okay, Sarah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, you know, show me what you're doing because um, I don't get it when it comes to Notion. And Thomas Frank actually helped a lot, you know, when he started mm-hmm. his videos about showing a YouTube workflow. That helped a lot get me started. And I think you do need, whether it's a template, I didn't use template, but just watching videos helps you get started. Um, And that can get the ball rolling. But if you watch the videos, maybe you download a template and it's still not clicking, maybe it's just not for you. I think that's Mm -hmm. why it's so cool because like literally there's probably 10 options out there that are perfectly fine. And they're different in their own way. You know, there's Airtable, I've heard a lot of great things about Airtable because all of the APIs, I think that's definitely where Notion is going um, Mm -hmm. when it can open up, you know, soon with the APIs and stuff. Um, But you have to find something that like you enjoy using. And that's what I found with Notion. So don't feel pressure because like all these YouTubers are talking about Notion. That's like, (laughs) oh, like, I just, I don't get it. It's like, it's okay. Maybe you need to check out like the other apps or something, right? That's why there's so many out there. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so many like notion competitors at the moment, but yeah, yeah, I think, I think one of the things that make, I don't know about you, the design, it just feels a lot uh, nicer inside a notion Um, compared to somebody else. It feels more friendly, but um, yeah. And then like, what would you say, I guess, like your sort of primary uses uh, for notion before we actually jump into it? (laughs) Definitely. So it started with just organizing the videos that I'm making, coordinating with, again, you know, my management who's locking in sponsorships for videos, um, you know, having the campaign links, the statement of work, everything just available there. Because when it comes to YouTube, everything moves really quickly. So when I'm ready to film the video, you know, from start to finish, it might take two or three days but I need to like know everything I need to say if I need to do anything extra for a sponsorship to where, um, you know, half the stuff that sponsors me is something that I use in my everyday life. So it's extremely easy to talk about Mm -hmm. half the stuff, maybe, okay, I'm not as familiar with it. So I have to really sit down and learn it so I can then either teach it or be able to talk about it. And that always a little bit feels like homework when you don't, if you have to like, track everything down in emails. If I have to text people, okay, what am I supposed to say? Or what is this feature? And having everything in one place has helped a ton. But that's just like basic productivity app. You can do that a ton of different apps, right? What Notion um, makes, why Notion I feel like is special. And I know you can do this in a couple other apps, but the linked databases, oh my gosh, like Mm. it, and that's what kind of hooked me. I was like, this is so fun. And I, I did study computer science for three and a half years in college. I'm a dropout. Okay, guys. So I'm not officially a programmer, but something that, of course, I hated it. And that's why I dropped out. But there were moments when you are programming and you feel like you're rewiring your brain and you feel like a superhero and you feel like, oh my gosh, this, like, this is crazy that I have the power to do this. There's something about just like linking databases and notion and making things connected and making it seem like things are talking to each other that kind of ignites that same spark where I'm like, oh, this just all makes sense and it all works together where I have my YouTube videos talking to my, you know, sponsor database and that talking to my social media database and those linked to my to-do database. Um, And that helps everything kind of just come full circle for me. Yeah, it's almost like you can just give your brain a little bit of a break, right? (laughs) Exactly. And then you do that, you know, you do that upfront work of building all of it. Hmm. And that's fun. Like, 
I love when I have like two hours to just be like, okay, what should I change? And you know, it's never perfect. Like I still need to build out a lot of stuff. Um, But having those moments, you know, having those few hours, like every other week to just kind of sit down and tweak, because it's never that's what I've learned with notion, like your setup has never arrived. And that's why I always get nervous about this type of stuff. Because I'm like, okay, this audience is super fancy. I feel like they're going to judge my setup because it's never really that finished. Right. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's just like easy to get in, get out. And then it's Mm. easy to adjust once I need things changed. And I think that's what made me kind of like not use other apps is I felt like everything was set in stone and I can't touch anything or it's going to break. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, the, the community have always got, gone through those phases. So they'll, they, they'll understand in terms of like the setup. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, take it away in terms of like the narrating us through how you use Notion. Um, okay. So basically, okay. and something that I'm excited about mm. is I've been watching a lot of videos on people showing like their dashboard, uh, mm. basically having just like an actionable place where they can go every day and, you know, make sure they're on top of things that's what I'm excited to build out next um yeah but some things on the personal side it's so funny that I have a little wedding icon and that just got destroyed <laughs> once Rona happened <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's probably not shame. happening anymore yeah um something that I've been having a lot of fun with actually is I kind of made I had no way to catalog pictures and memories I feel like everyone kind of just has a slew of things on their iPhone and they never really look back at it so this has been a really fun way to just document and every time I do go out and about in the world to just like bring my nice camera and take pictures and have a way to kind of quickly go back and be like oh man that was a fun day that was a cool day Um, so this has actually been a lot of fun Um, and just a way to also also share with people. I think like my mom has this link and stuff so she can just like, yeah, yeah, come in and see what I'm up to. But this is really where like the magic happens as you would say. So these are just like my most recent videos. And if people are familiar with, you know, the Thomas Frank setup, it's pretty similar to that. I basically have, you know, the different views. So this is actually where I am most of the time. So this is basically just filtered the the current videos for everything where the status is not published. And Mm. this is where I can just have a more focused view on what videos are coming up. uh, You know, is it approved? This is who's editing the videos. So um, recently I hired an editor and he does about, I'm trying to get it to a 50-50. I am a complete control freak and I have terrible anxiety about letting things go. So we're working on that. But as you can see, you know, three Mm. videos coming up. So doing a good (laughs) job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, this is where I keep my sponsors and I basically tag them based on the month um, Mm -hmm. just so I can see what is coming ahead and like I mentioned earlier I have everything uh basically linked to each other via you know the linked uh, databases and the relation feature so I can see um you know DJI sponsor two videos um this is where I you know you can just like go click on the video and this is the video page where I basically have I'm not super organized but as you can see mm-hmm. I do have like shot lists and things and I have just random notes I don't script out my videos but because tech is so it's just a lot right it can be a lot <laughs> yeah, so yeah. as yeah as you're using things you want to make sure that oh, okay I make a note of that and so once you actually turn on the camera and talk about the product you're not mm-hmm. actually missing things and um Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, let's see, we can just go back to the videos. And usually I have, you know, if you, if you click into things, um, sometimes it's super organized and sometimes it's not like if you see the iPad review, I actually did write out like a very hmm. extensive script because I was like, wow, there is so much I want to cover in this. 
and mm. I don't want to miss anything. And this turned into like a 25, almost 30 minute video. And it was super helpful to people, which is great. Um, but there's just some things where I have to be more detailed and that's where it's helpful to have everything um, here. And then, you know, I always have a ton of options for titles. Yeah. I think, let's see, this is like a recent one where I just, I go through so yes. many different oh. titles because if I don't, if a video doesn't have a title, you're not posting the video. I know that's <laughs> a depressing reality, but it's just like, it's truth, right? Um, yeah. I use the toggles all the time because I always like to hide information. Mm. Um, so yeah, so, you know, I have sponsors. I have the date for sending for approval, who, whoever the editor is going to be, if they're socials. Um, and then I have, you know, any files that I need. And I need to social, the social thing is something that I haven't actually been using a lot. And I think I, I might need to adjust the way I use it or just use it more. This has been the only one that hasn't been natural to me because whenever mm. I have an Instagram idea or something like social media is very fluid for me where I just have an idea and I just post it. So I'm not planning out tweets. I'm not planning out what I'm going to Instagram. Uh, so usually the socials is only for if it's like a sponsored social. So it'll be linked to, you know, whatever YouTube video and whatever sponsor. So that's the thing, like YouTube videos database is related to social sponsors and my to do. And then yeah. socials is related to all that sponsors is related to all that. Um, mm -hmm. so it does help me keep everything kind of, you know, together. Yeah, and I need stuff, to update, yeah. I started putting my thumbnails as the cover photos. And then obviously I got lazy and stopped doing that, <laughs> but I need to keep doing that. Yeah. Cause I feel like it looks good to be able to see it in the gallery view yeah. and be like, Oh man, these are all the videos I posted. Good job. And it's an easy way to reflect over what I post. Um, I never use the Kanban board. I mean, I guess no. this is a fine way to use it, but more I just hang out in the in the database view sure and out of curiosity how do you um come up with that sort of ideation process of new videos yeah usually it starts with a piece of tech and then I say mm -hmm. okay what's like a bigger story I can tell so um some there's some tech you know like I know the new iPhone's coming out like that that video is going to be about the iPhone. There's not really like a bigger thing to say about that. But even like this um, video, I don't think I have written much about it, but that's two camera, like two camera comparisons, which is fine, but that's a pretty niche thing. So it'll probably do yeah. decent search, but I always like to ask, is there something more, like, is there a bigger story that I can tell that anyone mm. in my audience would be interested in? So I'm thinking around that video as I'm using these cameras, as I'm thinking about the video, it's always in the back of my brain of, okay, what's the bigger story I can tell? And with that, I think it's going to be full frame versus APS-C. Is mm -hmm. there still a huge advantage of, you know, spending the extra money on a full frame camera opposed to a smaller sensor camera? Um, yeah. And a lot of that as I'm having those conversations, just I'll dump it just in the, you know, in the docu or the, I don't know, the page. I think that's what it's yeah, called, yeah. right? Um, and as you can mm. see, like, here's another one, or maybe I showed you this one, but it's just like a lot of random things. I'll write down specs, but I'll also, um, you know, write down anything that I comes to mind. Like this video was so chaotic. Um, but just as I'm learning about tech and I'm thinking about it, I'm just writing down all of my thoughts. And then usually yeah. I'll come back to the Notion page and kind of start editing things. Um, so, you yeah. don't want to miss anything. So I guess it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a clipping yeah. area, isn't it, as well? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, Brilliant. And then, yeah, so, and then my podcast, it's kind of the same setup. I, I just had a question on the yeah. um, the YouTube one. So you have there as well a a connected or related sort of uh, database with the to do list. So how do yeah. you use that? Um, is okay. that just a list of views and then you connect them? So together? this is my to do list is something that I'm actually proud of, and I'm definitely gonna make 
a video on, but we'll give, yeah. we'll give your audience a little preview. Oh, an here exclusive we go. Um, an exclusive. <laughs> and it's like so chaotic. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, sure. So I used to use this app called Things a ton. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people use it. But the only downside is it's just an iPhone, iPad, and iMac app. And as I briefly mentioned before, almost all of my workflow has moved off of Apple devices. So I still use an iPhone. Of course, I love my iPhone. But, and I'm doing this on an iMac, which is so funny. But I have a desktop PC at my office that I use a lot. And also my laptop is a Dell XPS. So I can't have any tools that are exclusive to one platform just because I'm also beyond, you know, 60, 70% of my workflow being on a non Apple product. Um, I'm always changing laptops. I'm always changing phones if I'm reviewing something. So I need a, uh, something more flexible than things. It was so fun. It was so snappy. It's a great app, but I kind of wanted to replicate a little bit of that in Notion, but I also wanted my to do's relating to my YouTube videos or, you know, the other things. So if I need to be more consistent with it, but you know, if I have this video coming up, I'll, I'll know that like, oh, if there's some to do's that are associated with this video, they'll hmm. pop up here or I can just like type in a new to do there and I'll end up in my to do um, page. I don't really care about, or it's not that I don't care my life is just a chaotic mess. So it's been fun to venture into this productivity sphere of all of you type A guys, because y'all are so on it. You're just on it, right? And so you guys have been my inspiration, but I'm still kind of a chaotic mess. So I can't have a specific day that a to-do list is due because mm. I'm always plus or minus like three days. Mm. So instead of just doing specific dates, I've just done priority and end of day, end of week and any time. Okay. So this is kind of like, um, this is kind of like things. Cause remember things had the someday, uh, you know, hmm. yeah, the someday, someday view or whatever. And that's kind of like what any time is. If I just have a random idea pop in my head, like, Oh, I should do this at some point. I'll put it as any time. And that means just like, don't stress out. So I have the sort prioritize obviously from if, uh, if it's not checked off and then the priority is ascending from end of day to any time. And then I have it prioritized based on the, um, you know, type of to do, whether it's YouTube podcast, switchboard, which is um, a software I'm building with my friend or personal to do's. Basically, if I have a new to do, you know, you can just add it as a new page like that, or you can just, you know, come down here and just enter it super quick. And I only have like two things to really enter. If it's anything more, I'm probably not going to get to it. Um, and then because I feel like productivity apps are a lot about not just entering in things, but also looking and feeling good about yourself that you got stuff done. Once this starts to fill up, and of course I could probably automatically do this. I just watched Thomas Frank's coding video where he had <laughs> things automatically fill and stuff, which is cool. But once I have, like once these start piling up the check to do's, I basically just drag them into the to do archive. And this is where I have all of my um, archive to do's where I can be like, oh, good job, Sarah. And then yeah. <laughs> again, I need to do something where it deletes after six months or something, or maybe I just go in there and delete it. But a lot of times those to do's actually have things in them that could be useful to me at, you know, at a later time if they're attached to a YouTube video. So that's why I keep them around in the archive because I don't really want to just outright delete them yet. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I just have personal to do the to do's. It's just like viewing yeah. the different information and different views. Um, and basically I did all of this by doing what's it called? Um, like I filtered the different types. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's a YouTube to do, basically I have that in the different spaces. Um, yeah. and I did a, what's it called? Is it just a linked database? I think I've been saying things wrong. I think when I wanted, <laughs> I should have said a related database. 
I think earlier yeah. I was calling related database link database. And this Listen. is a link database <laughs> <laughs> where you basically take the database, link it somewhere else, do a different sort. And yeah. that's what this is. So yeah, that's basically, it. yeah, I take the master to do and the inbox, filter them to their specific types um, and then bring in those to do's to just their own respective workplaces and the YouTube space, the podcast space and the switch word space. Yeah. I really like, um, I really like how you've done the sort of sorting so that the end of the day pops up at the top. Um, yeah. And I, I like that. And as, as well, I guess for frantic people, or people who just don't necessarily have like a set, they don't want to dedicate a day to it, then having like that three tier system is quite nice because mm -hmm. less pressure on you. Um, exactly. And yeah. Don't stress yourself out. I think that's the thing with these apps is mm. that's what I felt with Asana or other things where it's, it gets, it's completely useless if you don't get it done on a specific day. Yeah. But the way I set up my notion is it's much more free flowing and you can just come in and you can tweak things like, Oh, I'm not going to get to this. So this needs to turn into like an any time to do. And it just, boom, it like filters itself out and we're good to go. And I need that because I am, as much as I'm trying to be super productive, type A, let's get it. There's still half of me that is such a chaotic, messy creative. And half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. That's the secret. That's what people don't know. No one knows what they're doing. We're trying. <laughs> We're getting there. It's a journey. But yeah. So. 100%. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's embracing it. I like that. Um, I also really like how you've done this, the, the connected to the date the connected tables. And, um, mm -hmm. I think I may steal the priority thing from you. That's yeah, really nice. do it. Yeah, well, that's what's so fun about these things is you look at other people's setups and you're like, Oh, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. <laughs> that's cool. And then, Oh, Pinching. I learned a lot from that. No, I love it. Yeah. And uh, I also like the way that you do photo diary as well. I think like yeah. I could do something like that for like memories and things like that. would be quite nice. Yeah. It's yeah, just, uh, it's, it's a lot nice, of fun. Nice things come to you when you want to cheer yourself up as well, I guess. Exactly. And yeah. I try to add, and I'm, I'm excited to just have so many entries here to where mm. then I can like sort, I'm basically using the emojis on like how I felt yeah. So I'm so excited for a future date where I can like filter it by emojis too. Like, Ooh, when did yeah. you feel loved? <laughs> yeah. You know? When did yeah. you feel angry? Here's all the pictures. Oh, that's so lovely. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Brilliant. Sarah, I'm, I'm conscious of your time, um, but uh, I, I, it's a fantastic demonstration of, of Notion. So um, thank you so much for coming on and um, we all really appreciate it. So thank you. Of course. It was an honor. And I'm excited <laughs> to... Um, see all you know the comments and people engaging because I know once you put your stuff out there I'm sure people are going to be like oh you should do this you should do that so yeah that's, that's sure what's we'll fun see. about these, these videos <laughs> yeah. yeah lovely thank you Sarah and um, make sure to have a good rest of the day you too